From accounts of missing bodies to ghostly hitchhikers, enigmatic Lake George located on the busy federal highway between Sydney and Canberra has earned a reputation for being one of Australia's paranormal mysteries. Lake George is a well-known landmark on the main highway between Sydney and Canberra in Australia. Although it's not always immediately recognisable as a lake, locals and visitors alike have always felt that there's something strange about Lake George, and it goes back much further than the area's controversial wind farm. Due to the disturbing nature of this content, viewer discretion is advised. If you like your stories full of intrigue, whodunit, and unexplained true horror, then you made it. True Horror Podcast is all that. Pull up your bed covers, turn off the light, and get ready to hear the bizarre, the mortifying, and supernatural tales where you decide if there's truth in what you hear. The water level of the lake seems to rise and fall for no apparent reason. It isn't connected to any rivers that might contribute to the almost tidal flow. The water is also described to be almost as saline as seawater when full. These days, the area is essentially dry farmland. A report from an early expedition in 1812 describes the lake as an inland sea, stretching so far that the travelers believed that they had reached the ocean. A steamship traveled the lake in 1886, and yachting used to be a popular pastime to do on it as well. The mystery of the lake's disappearing water is one yet to be solved. As a child on school holidays, I would board a Greyhound bus from Canberra to Sydney as an unaccompanied minor. I think my earliest memory of this was eight years old. Lake George is not really that far south of Canberra, maybe just over half an hour. What I always remembered though was how creepy it was along that stretch of road, and sometimes the bus driver would stop, maybe for a smoke break or toilet break, I don't know, but we would all pile out of the bus and wait on the side of the road, everyone talking or mesmerised by the disappearing lake and how much it had either gone out or in since they'd last gone past. Stories were told of its unusual account, but nothing made sense to me. It was definitely a mystery that I would have loved to have solved. All I remember is that sometimes it could look beautiful, while other times it was eerily creepy. In the early days of my travels to Sydney, it was known to be a hazard. My mother hated driving through there whenever we visited my grandmother in Sydney. Lake George had a huge number of accidents during that time when major highways were being duplicated between Canberra and Sydney. The stretch of a single carriageway alongside Lake George was inadequate for the traffic coming through, leading to a number of accidents in which 21 lives were lost in a six-year period. As much as it seems to captivate people, Tragedy seems to also have followed the lake through much of its history. The most famous of these events was in 1956, when five RMC cadets drowned in the capsizing of two sailing boats. Then two years later, in 1958, another five lost their lives in a boating accident. Out on the often placid Lake George, storms can whip up quickly, turning boaters out into the icy water. And even in the past, the unseen perils of fence posts have lurked beneath the waters. Nearby residents say the place can appear unearthly at certain times of the day or night. And the mystical Australian Yowie is even said to haunt the shores of the lake. The Capital Wind Farm near Bungendore is the largest wind farm in New South Wales and began to be built in 2008 with completion at the end of 2009. It was built by an international energy company on the banks of the lake at a cost estimated between 220 million and 370 million Australian dollars. While most residents have adjusted to the eyesore, many still complain about the noise. 
Some locals claim it's not just the windmills and disappearing lake, but that while the main deaths around the lake became national news, there are still many other stories that didn't. One man said, It's fairly difficult to access for a boat unless you know where to get in. A lot of people avoid it for those reasons, and it has this reputation for blowing up into dangerous conditions quite quickly. On a still summer afternoon with the water like glass, the man was in his timber mirror dinghy when he peeled off his life jacket to sunbake. One of the summer afternoon storms blew up and before long the boat was capsizing and my life jacket was drifting away and I had to make a decision whether to pursue the life jacket because I knew my father's wrath would be pretty horrible when I got ashore without the life jacket. But I decided to stay in the boat and eventually the storm abated and I was able to sail back to shore. I was never able to find the life jacket. Coupled with the fast changing conditions in icy water, another danger lies beneath the surface. That boat ended up being holed by timber fence posts at one stage and we pulled it out of the water with a big gash like the Titanic at the side of it. Also, when two men supposedly spotlight shooting feral deer from their dinghy in 1992 drowned in the lake, a police helicopter crew called to the scene found a spotlight in the water. A search boat crew later found a second powerful light. Apparently in the inquest a year later, it was said that they weren't feral deer shooting, but in fact were just fishing. While most people have heard of the drowning of the five cadets from Duntroon, which gave the lake its sinister reputation, the lesser known is the tragedy that happened 18 months later when a Queen Bian man, his wife, three children and a Catholic priest set out in a skiff in January 1958 for a picnic. On their return and to the man's horror, he discovered only a quarter of a tank of fuel left. After futile attempts to row, some people stood up in the boat, causing it to sink. The tragedy continued to unfold until the end when the only survivor was the Roman Catholic priest. He gave a very harrowing statement to the inquest. Even today, so many years on, it is still very difficult to read that statement he made, especially about the little kids. Lake George is an endorheic lake or sink lake as it has no outflow of water to rivers and oceans. The lake is believed to be more than a million years old. Originally, small streams drained its catchment into the Yass River, but then the Lake George escarpment rose due to major cross movement along a strong fault line, blocking this drainage and forming the lake. Lake George has in previous ice ages been much larger and deeper. In modern day though, when full, Lake George is one of the largest inland freshwater lakes in Australia. However, the lake is rarely full and its constantly changing water levels are the source of much of its mystical status. Some of the myths surrounding why this happens have been debunked, yet many still believe them to be true. These unexpected changes in water levels have prompted several unconventional theories, such as an underground links to nearby cave systems and to similar sized lakes in New Zealand and even Siberia. Apparently their water levels go up as Lake George goes down and vice versa. Fact though, studies by hydrologists reveal the water levels of Lake George are determined purely by the natural processes of rainfall, runoff and evaporation. As the lake is so shallow, each of these effects becomes more noticeable than in deeper bodies of water. Then there are the tales of missing bodies. Since 1949, 13 people have died in the lake's seemingly placid waters, including most famously five naval cadets from Duntroon who drowned when their boat overturned in freezing water in 1956. Many believe that the bodies of these poor cadets were never recovered. Police records have indicated that the body of each one of the cadets was in fact recovered, in some cases months later after the water levels dropped though. 
And then there's bunyips and yowies. The most colourful legend surrounding Lake George is that of a Loch Ness type, type monster that has occasionally been reported lurking in the murky depths of the lake and allegedly retreats to subterranean mud caves when the lake is dry. In fact, in 1866, New South Wales Road Guide warned travellers to be careful of a large water monster that occasionally surfaces for air. The same publication also claims that the lake is surrounded by gigantic towering mountains. As anyone who has driven past the lake will attest, apart from a small range, there are no gigantic mountains around Lake George. Given this level of exaggeration, many believe the water monster was probably just a large duck. Another myth about Lake George is that it is a hotbed of alien activity. Most reports, though, are of strange celestial objects on the eastern side of the lake spotted from the Federal Highway. The majority of these reports occur on misty evenings and involve a yellow-coloured object. Now, the fact of this is that some of these reports can be explained by Venus arising in the east or the bright lights of a sand mine that has operated for many years near Bungendore. However, an account on January the 16th, 1996, near Collector, when a mother and her daughter witnessed not one, but two UFOs land in a paddock adjacent to Lake George, still does have skeptics puzzled. The eyewitnesses describe the object which hovered above their car, emitting a number of sparks underneath it, as large and with rows of coloured lights. Of course, no myth is without a ghostly hitchhiker. And Lake George has regularly reported incidences involving a girl in white who stops cars on the federal highway and asks for a lift. She asks the driver to take her to her grandmother's house in Queanbeyan, but when she's taken there, her grandmother says, She drowned in the lake 30 years ago. The little girl then disappears. Adding credibility to these reports is that a little girl, Brenda Lynch, did drown in the lake on January the 12th, 1958. Despite this, the hitchhiker story is almost certainly an urban legend. The same story, but with different locations, appears in folklore all over Australia and other parts of the world. Here's some things you might not know about Lake George. Apparently, there is a secret convict canal Hidden under part of the old Federal Highway at the collector end of the lake is a curious convict-built canal constructed in the mid-1830s. The 50 metre by 4 metre canal was the brainchild of early landholder Terence Aubrey Murray, who had a chain gang of convicts build this folly to channel fresh water from Lake George into the stagnant swamp on his property north of the lake known as Murray's Lagoon. Unfortunately for Murray and his merry gang of labourers, the canal proved to be a futile exercise because of the failure to recognise that the lagoon level was in fact marginally higher than the lakes, not lower. According to one version of the story, when the canal was completed, water from the swamp flowed into the lake instead of in the reverse direction. Also, paddle steamers to hovercrafts have been spotted on the lake. An advertisement in September 1884 acclaimed that the virtues of Douglas House, a historic former guest house on the lake's western shore, boasted it had 20 large and airy rooms with an unsurpassed view of Lake George, across which a grand little steamer, the Pioneer, carried visitors. The remains of the boiler of the Pioneer are still in a Bungendore backyard. Other watercraft to explore the lake include sailing boats. In the 1950s, several sailing clubs built clubhouses at the lake, bathtubs, there's one still in the middle of the lake, and hollowed out pumpkins left over from the annual Collector Pumpkin Festival. It's also been known as a water pendulum. When a group of settlers camped by the shores of Lake George in the early 1820s, they apparently woke in the morning to discover that the shoreline had mysteriously retreated over a kilometre from where it was the night before. Where did all the water go? 
the explorers were left puzzled. The explanation actually lies above the lake in the air and in the ever-present wind that blows around the area and through it. As the lake is shallow, an average of two meters deep when full, prevailing winds blow the water from one side of the lake to the other. Scientists call this the pendulum effect. Early explorers needn't have been mystified about where the water had vanished, it had simply blown to the opposite side of the lake. The eastern side of Lake George is home to an important baseline that acts as a reference point from which all surveys in New South Wales originate, yes, the whole state. The baseline, completed in 1874, and the last of four to be positioned at or near the lake, is marked by a tall stone pillar at the northern end and a smaller can in the south. The two landmarks are almost nine kilometres apart in a direct line. While in 1850 a local grazer stocked the lake with Murray cod and by 1870 there were so many fish in the lake that a trawler worked the lake, commercially netting the fish. Unfortunately, soon after the trawler arrived, the lake did one of its famous disappearing acts and shrank and the fish subsequently died due to lack of water. Lake George is 25 kilometers long and is 10 kilometers wide. Levels can vary from 1.5 to 4.5 meters, 7.5 meters at its deepest point, and in shallow areas under one meter in depth. The lake's capacity when full can hold 5 million cubic meters of water. Lake George is massive. Scientists have recorded 250 meter thickness of sediment. Some sediment found in the bed of the lake dates back three to 5,000 years. As a dramatic feature of the landscape in inland New South Wales, it's no surprise that the lake is included in local Dreamtime stories. This story originates from the local Aboriginal people, the traditional owners of the land in which Lake Nangara or Lake George is located. While Lake George was named by white settlers in honour of King George III in 1820, the local indigenous named it Lake Wirawa, which loosely translates to bad water. However, the name is also similar to the regional indigenous word for eagle, which many eagles do fly overhead of Lake George. Local lore tells of Bujabulya, a water spirit that lives in the lake. Bujabulya created the rivers, valleys, hills, mountains, peoples, and animals and plants. It is said when Bujabulya is happy there is plenty of water, but when the spirit is not satisfied, the water disappears and so does the food supply. That is why Lake George can become completely dry and why many ceremonies happened at this place to keep Bujabulya happy. Other tales of the Pajong of the local indigenous people resided there when the area was abundant with food. The spirits of Lake George, including Birik, a real bad spirit that terrified and tormented people. Maybe the bad water comes from these Aboriginal Dreamtime stories, as do many of the Australian paranormal unexplained activities surrounding our ancient land. It's the white settlers who have only been here since 1788, less than 250 years to date, while the stories of a bunyip who haunts swamps and billabongs could well be true from the generational stories told by the Aboriginals. The Yowie stories leaked over into white history as well and began circulating from the 1800s. Even today, the lake is known to attract Yowie hunters. Amongst these sightings are many locals or travellers passing by. One long-term resident in the area also tells of a night he was woken between 1 and 2 a.m. to hear a noise in the distance that sounded like a cow in pain. After some time, he heard a noise on his veranda, which at first he thought were his dogs, but when a loud thud had him running for the door, he was surprised to find something far more sinister on his veranda. A creature that looked half man, half animal, was bailing one of his dogs up. The dog was terrified and the creature that stood about 5 foot 10 ran off into the night. 
The man stood for several moments collecting his thoughts about what he'd just seen. When he felt able to talk about his experience, he found his stories matched that of several other families who had experienced the same in the same area. While there may be an earthly scientific reason for Lake George's mysterious water levels, it's always been a place of mystery to me, beautiful and tragic all at the same time, whether full or empty. You know what to do, that five star review. Or you can swing by YouTube to comment and like. Now, if you want to get more personal and scare me with your tales of horrors, take a ride on the wild side and share them on my subreddit, True Horror Podcast. Until next time, remember that sometimes things you see in the shadows are more than just shadows.